Hello and welcome back to my Getting Started with Programming Python course. In today's episode we're going to go over the concept of variables and we'll go into some detail about how they work and how they work differently in Python to some other languages. Now even if you feel somewhat familiar or comfortable with the concept of variables already, um, even if you've had a bit of experience doing programming, I still recommend you watch this video even if the pacing feels slow at times because there might still be some concepts in here that could be useful to understand. So starting off where we left off in our Visual Studio environment here, we've just got the program we had written last episode, just the print hello world program, pretty simple stuff. And I've also added a few other example files uh, on the side here, which we're going to look at in a moment. So don't worry about those if you notice those. So to start off with, just a quick recap, basically all we have here is a program that just functions very simply. Uh, it's a print function. So we basically call the print function and we say, hey, I want to print this value inside this function. But at the moment, we don't necessarily have the terminology to accurately really describe what's going on here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start looking at the concept of variables. So really, what is a variable? Well, put simply, a variable is just a way that we can store some information in a named value. So uh, for those of you who've done maths, this might feel somewhat comfortable to you. But in Python, the way we can do this is say, um, let's here put, uh, let's create a variable, a new variable called text. So to create a variable in Python, we just type the name of the variable that we want to call it. And then we just set it equal to some value. So let's set text equal to hello world, for example. Okay. So and um, it's that simple. In Python, we have now created a variable. So a little bit as to what that means. So the variable itself is called text and we have set it equal to the text, hello world, which is enclosed as such in our quotes. So what this can allow us to do is something like removing this from inside our print statement and instead we can say print text, okay? And when the program runs, what it's gonna do is it's going to start reading from the top of the file, like going downwards, and it's going to hit this line and it's going to say, okay, I need to create a variable and I need to remember that text is equal to this. And every single time that we use text, what it's going to do is it's going to look up the value that's stored in text and replace it in here. Now, strictly speaking, that's not necessarily super technically accurate, but for our early purposes, it's a good enough analogy um, to work with. So if we control S to make sure our program is saved and then using control tilde, which is above the tab key on your keyboard, like last time, or going terminal, new terminal, we can bring up this terminal window again. And again, if you're on Windows, make sure you set it to command prompt. We're going to fix that in the next episode. Right. And here, just run, typing python program.py, because that's the name of the file, and hitting enter, you'll see that it still does the exact same thing as it did last time, just prints out the text inside the variable. So what if we were to change this? What if we were to say text equals 23? Now, obviously, our naming doesn't make a whole lot of sense anymore because this is a number and this is text, but Python still sort of works. So if we run it, we still see 23 printed to the screen. But this is actually a source of some confusion for a lot of beginners because it might be quite easy to look at this program and think, okay, so whatever I type after here um, will get printed out. So let's just type, uh, this is a test. Right. Now you can already see that Visual Studio is showing us some errors with this, but if we try and run this code, you'll see that we actually get an error and it's saying invalid syntax. So what went wrong? Well, that's because whatever you store in a variable has to be of a specific data type. Now we can't just put raw text into here because when Python is running, it's going to get confused. If you can imagine being the Python interpreter and trying to read this file, you'd start coming down and you'd see like, okay, so we've got this thing called text and we've got an equal symbol, but it has no way of knowing when the text that we want to store in variable starts and when it ends, because as far as it's concerned, you know, this word here is just as good as this word here and everything in between. So we need to actually be able to give Python a way of knowing when our information starts and stops when it comes to textual information. So that's why we always have to use quotes. Now, so far you've seen that we've used double quotes to enclose text-based information. However, we can also use single quotes. The only thing that matters is that the quote size that you use at the start must be matched at the end. So this is how we can say, hey, this data here is to be treated as one thing and stored in text. So what happened before when we had it set to 23? Well, you see, this is what's called different data types. And sometimes it's not always obvious from early Python tutorials what's actually happening here. So for a better way of sort of looking at the differences between Python and how other languages would handle this situation, let's look at some other examples. So this is a Rust program. So Rust is a compiled language. It's 
very low level. It's quite complicated if you're a beginner, but we're not really learning the specifics about Rust. We're just going to have a look and say, okay, so here we've got, this is a variable declaration in Rust for storing the words astro code in the variable called name, which, you know, that looks quite complicated. So let's see if it's any better in C++. So this is the C++ example. And okay, we've got a few different things going on here, some different words, but maybe it's a little bit more legible. And, and finally, let's look at a programming language called Go. And Okay, um, that's also a bit more complicated. So why are all of these so different to Python's way of doing things? Well, that's because Python is what we call a high level programming language. So it's designed to simplify and make the process easier for a programmer and make them so we don't have to worry about so many little details. If we look at the Rust, C++ and Go examples, there's something we might see in common with all of them. So let's have a look again. You'll see we generally have some sort of word that's saying we're declaring a variable. And then for some of them, we have these type modifiers. So I'll explain what that means in a moment, but we've got these things called type modifiers in all of them. So you can see in Go, it's called string. And in Rust, we've got str, which also could be called string. So, you know, there's some similarity here. So what's really going on? Well, this is because programs have to have ways of telling the operating system the what kind of information is supposed to be remembered. So at the very core, computers remember everything in ones and zeros. Computers run on this binary counting system, so everything has to be rem represented as a number in memory. So what we need to do is be able to tell the computer, hey, all of these numbers need to be interpreted in different ways. So in programming, there's some very common data types that all programming languages pretty much support. So the first one that we've seen is there's this thing called a string, right, which is what programmers use to refer to um, text data, stuff that's wrapped in quotes. Uh, it's called a string because it's considered to be like a string of characters all lined up together, you know, all strung together. So we call um, information inside quotes, we call that a string, and that's just text data. The other very common type is int or an integer. So any whole number, one, two, three, they can be negative in a lot of languages. Um, so, you know, negative one, negative 27. But the only key thing is it has to be an integer, which, you know, from mathematics is just a whole number. And then the last super common data type is called a float. And this stands for floating point decimal, which is a really fancy way of just saying decimal numbers. So any number that's got a little decimal point in it, um, we call those floats. Again, floating point integer, don't worry about the naming convention. You just have to know that string is basically text data, integer is just number data, and floats refer to decimals. Now, we won't look at them today, but in a few episodes' time, we're going to also encounter some other data types that Python has available to you from the get-go. One of them is called a list, which is basically a way of getting a whole bunch of values in a big, long list and keeping them all in the same variable. And then the other thing that we might encounter is called a dictionary, which is a way of mapping certain values to certain keys. Um, but don't worry too much about that. We'll get to that at another point. But for now, what we need to know is that when I talk about strings in these videos, I'm talking about text data. When I'm talking about integers, I'm talking about whole numbers, and floats are decimal numbers. Those are the core types, and you'll see them in all sorts of different examples. So if we jump back to the Go example for a moment, and let's just start unpacking what's going on here. So Go is really readable. What this is saying is I want to create a variable, that's what var is short for, and I want to call it name, and it's going to be a string type. And then we can set it equal to a string. So in Go, if you try to set this variable equal to a number, like in Python, when we did 23 before, this would actually give you an error if you were to run it in Go, because we're saying, hey, this variable called name has to be of type string. And we're trying to set it to an integer. So this would actually give us an error. Now, jumping back finally to our Python program, our Python program does an error because Python is very flexible. It will allow us to set any kinds of variable types on the fly, and it won't complain about it. It will just handle it. But that can sometimes confuse people because especially if you have bad variable naming like this here, where this variable is called text and we're putting a number in it, and then we're printing the text and it's being displayed to screen, you might think that this is actually text, but Python is actually handling in the background. When you do the print statement, it's actually going, okay, so text is actually an integer and it's doing all the conversions. So really what might be a better way of calling this variable to make it a bit less confusing is call it number, for example. And Python can handle that just fine. So again, running this code, so saving it, coming down here and doing Python program.py and running it, we'll see that we get 23 printed out just as we did before. And this actually works 
like normal. We could just type in a number here, say 213, and it would get printed straight out. So the print statement in Python is really powerful. It will basically display whatever you put in here, no matter what kind of data type it is. You could stick pretty much everything in here in Python and something readable will be displayed, uh, printed when the program is run. Okay, so that's the basics of these things called data types. Now, they won't really matter for us right now, but in some episodes time, we're going to talk about why they can cause early Python programmers some issues because they're not obvious. And so sometimes you can run into some errors where you're trying to say, add a number to some text and it doesn't like that. So we're going to talk about type conversion in a little, in a little while. But for this episode, we're mainly just focusing on these fundamental data types. So what does this mean? Well, let's go through and do some examples of each of them. So we're going to say, um, let's, create a, let's create a variable called pi. So again, we just name our variable straight up in Python and then we use the equal sign and we set it to some value. So pi we know is equal to 3.14159, you know, and it goes on, but let's just use this short version for now, okay? So we've created a variable called pi that's storing a floating point number. Now let's create a variable called age. And here we're going to set it to an age, say 20, okay? So we've got a variable that we've called age and we're just setting it equal to an integer called 20. Now notice, again, we don't have to tell Python what type of data it is, it just works it out and it just knows. But it is important to note that these are different data types. And then finally, we can come back and create our name variable. So we just type name, we set it equal to, and then again, using our matching quotes, um, we can type in astro code as the name. Yeah. So we have these interesting things. Now, some other things you can also do in Python is say we want, um, let's create a new variable called math. And I'll demonstrate that you can, in fact, when you assign a variable, you can actually do maths and it's natively supported in, in Python. So here we're actually saying, hey, we want the variable called math, but we want it to basically be equal to 20 plus 40. So when we print math, we should see that indeed, 60 gets printed to the screen. So saving the file and running it again, we see, oh, 60 is indeed printed to the screen, which is really useful. So Python also supports uh, multiplication. You can do natively, you can do division using the slash symbol, and you can do to the power of like something squared by doing two multiplication signs in a row. And Python handles, um, using operator precedence and it does it all in the correct way. And so, I mean, I'm not going to verify it right now, but apparently that's approximately equal to 28.8 recurring. All right, so that's really it for variables. But the last thing I'm going to show you in this episode, because we're going to use it in the next one, is another function. So we know that we have this function called print for displaying stuff to the screen, but now we're going to learn about a function called input, which is so we can get user input into the script. So we can type something in and the program can use it. So how do we use it? Well, let's just call the input function, right? And let's just call it like this and just hit save and see what happens, okay. So I'm just gonna quickly clear my screen, um, I clear my terminal here. So on Windows, uh, typing CLS will clear the console. And if you're on Linux or Mac, type clear into the terminal to clear all the other text from it. And we're gonna run the program again. So look what happens when I press enter this time. You'll see it doesn't print out anything it's just showing an empty thing. And that's because it's waiting on line two for user input. So I guess we can hit enter and we've now given it an input and then it processes the rest of the file. But that's not necessarily very obvious. So generally when we want to get user input, we also want to prompt the user and ask them for the kind of input that we want. So let's put in a little thing in here and say, what, uh, what is your name? Okay, just like this. Now, again, we're just giving it a string, just saying, hey, input prompt with this. And if we save this, it's pretty obvious what happens here. Hey, look, when we run it, it asks us what our name is and waits for us to type our name here. So let's type astro code and hit enter. Okay, so we've given it our input and then it runs through and does everything else. Now, that's all well and good, but obviously if we're going to the effort of collecting some input from the user, we might want to be able to actually use it for something. So what if we make our program here actually print back our name to us, say our name back to us. How would we do that? Well, that's where variables come in. So what we can do is we can create a variable called, uh, well, let's get rid of this variable called name so we don't have any collisions. And let's create a variable called name again. And we're gonna set it equal to the input. Okay, so we've gone up a level here. There's a bit more complexity, but essentially we're saying, hey, create a variable called name and then store in it the user input that they provide from this function here. 
okay? And that's going to be stored in a variable called name. Now you'll notice I did delete our other variable called name because you don't want to have a conflicting variable declarations because what would have happened is this, this input would have been collected, but then we would have immediately overridden and changed the value in the next statement. So that's why we only wanted to have one reference to it when we're setting it up. All right, so now, just like we did before, if we just come down here inside our print statement and type print name, hopefully what we should expect to happen is after we put our name in and hit enter, then it'll be stored in this variable and then we'll run through the program and we will print it back out at us. So let's run the code again and see what happens. So you can see it's asking us what our name is down here in the console. So let's say astro code and hit enter. And bingo, you can see it prints it straight back out at us. Now that's super useful. So in the next episode, we're going to be looking at this a little bit more as well as showing some different ways that you can um, combine variables together and different ways to use them, uh, as long as some con basic conditional statements like ifs and elses, which can help really level up our programming skills. But for the moment, that's really where we're at. So that's the fundamental concept, you know, variables, very easy. You just said the name of the variable and what they're equal to. And just remember that even though we don't see it in Python, you know, an integer is a different thing to a decimal, which is different to a string. And that's really all you need to take away. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.